future trends, deep insights, industry leaders. This is the iGaming Next podcast with your host, Pierre Lindt. Hello, Peter. How is it going with you today? Hello, Pierre. Nice to see you again. Uh, good. It's going fantastic. Thank you. Long time no see, I must say, because, uh, the, you know, the, the funny thing, uh, I'm really excited to do this podcast today, uh, Peter, because uh, we obviously used to work together, but it was a very long time ago, back in the BetSafe days, mm. like, uh, yes, like 10 years exactly. ago. Yeah, yeah. Ten, uh, ten and a half. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that yeah, was in... You... Uh, in 2011 exactly so uh, so yeah it's uh, some water on the bridge and then a little bit more gray hair uh, <laughs> on the sides uh, so so yes you're, you're absolutely right but it was a blast yeah exactly no it's been uh, it's been a long time coming and, and it's a very long time ago we, uh, we 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 spoke and so i'm really happy that we managed mm. to to connect uh, through this uh, podcast again and obviously through yes. through this decade a lot has happened in this uh, industry and i you know i remember back in the day at betsafe like how uh, how rudimentary the systems that we worked with were mm -hmm. back in the day like yeah. and I, I i'm assuming you know obviously you work on the other side of the fence now and and uh yeah uh, through yeah. these 10 years a lot has happened i would imagine in, in this process exactly let's uh, if we were to do like a 10 year review it would be like a very very long uh, session uh so so <laughs> yes a lot of things have happened uh but and 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 some things have stayed the same as well, right? So so like uh, like from my point of view, like the, in this industry and as in many others, like the only constant is change, right? So yeah. so every day we see new things popping up uh, left and right um, from the different territories, from regulators, uh, from uh, providers, from uh, new innovations. So so it's truly truly exciting industry to be part of. That's absolutely uh, true, Peter. So. So yeah, I mean, rather than looking backwards today, I guess uh, today mm -hmm. we are going to be looking forward. And uh, the, the yes. topic of today is uh, predictions for 2022. What mm -hmm. will be in trend mm -hmm. and what will develop further? I thought it was a mm -hmm. good uh, topic to, ha to have today as we draw to a close uh, in this year. And I mean, in general, 2021 has been an incredible year for the industry at, at large yes. i mean uh, you know yes. us is expanding mm -hmm. there's uh, movements on the regulatory front uh, you know nfts crypto uh, cryptocurrencies has become a thing it's, it's been a, exactly. it's been an inc it's been an incredible year i mean from your perspective i mean peter you're mm -hmm. the head of country managers now for soft to bet like can, can you um, like how has the year been for you in in general but like I would say similar, right? So, so I would say hectic, uh, fantastic, uh, ever changing, uh, new things to, 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 to look after. Um, so, so yeah, it's been an intense year. Uh, so, so, um, myself and I think the rest of the teams are looking forward, hopefully soon to a little bit of relaxation and like to kind of like try to, to take in all these things that we actually accomplished this year. Um, so, so it's been a, an exciting year. Uh, and like 2022 is, is looking um, even brighter, I think, from, from our side, at least, from our perspective, uh, from an industry point of view. Like, first thing I would like to mention is that uh, there is a Danish, uh, like a famous Danish uh, proverb or like a saying that like predictions are, are difficult, especially about the future. Right. So 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 that like with that in mind, uh, like when we if we do like a, a revision of this podcast in a year's time from now. I will. I will bet you. The only thing we will, uh, we will, we will, uh, we will accomplish from this is, is looking a little bit foolish, baby, because yeah. there is no no way of, of of like being able to predict. It's like educated guessing, I would say, yeah. uh, rather than maybe predictions, right? So 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 that's uh, kind of like the backdrop of it. But uh, let's let's try. Let's let's give it a try and yeah. see how many we can we can uh, we can get right. Good, good disclaimer here, Peter, and a very, very good point. When we look back at this, we we might look a bit uh, silly, but I mean, it's it's much easier to predict the past than what it is to predict the future. I guess that is what your exactly. uh, brilliant uh, Danish proverb is alluding to. Um, yeah, exactly. But uh, uh, but yes, I mean, let's look forward uh, now then, uh, mm -hmm. Peter, into 2021. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we. To me, there is a lot of underlying interesting trends that is happening within the industry 
right now that in my opinion and we've been speaking about this a lot in the podcast throughout the year will yeah. um decide kind of who are the winners and losers uh, in the future there's a lot of decisions yeah. that's being made like big big yeah. strategic decisions uh, for mm-hmm. example as a, as a tier two operator do you go full force into the us for example i mean that's mm-hmm. a big strategic decisions that, that is happening yes. right now um yeah. with not a clear uh, cut um, answer you know what is the right decision but we will see um these decisions coming into fruition for next year so uh, you know yeah. It's interesting to have this discussion now, but as a starting point, speaking about mm-hmm. uh, America, why don't we mm-hmm. uh, start by looking at some regulatory predictions for uh, 2022? And I'll just leave the word over to you, Peter. Like, what, what do you see as like? <laughs> I mean, it's a big question. Like, like for example, we have Canada now. We, the mm-hmm. UK is uh, reforming their mm-hmm. um, yes. Yes. Uh, their gambling act. Uh, Germany yeah. obviously is on everyone's mind. US, Latin America, yeah. Netherlands, Nordics. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, Everything many is happening. Are things happening. Yeah. What, what, what do no, you but think? But I would like, say, yeah. yeah. Again, I think this is like the the global trend, so to speak, right? So, so we see so many markets now are moving from like a deregulated state or like a, from a monopoly state, and going into this transition of, of putting some legislation in place to to kind of try to find some order in this in this chaos uh, that the iGaming industry is in 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 some markets at least, right? Uh, so, so I would definitely say, like, looking ahead for, to, to next year and, and what will happen, obviously more markets will, will kind of, like, catch up, I think. Like you say, U.S. is, is, is a good example, right? We will see more states uh, that will introduce uh, this legislation, uh, either for sports betting or casino or both. Um, so, so how? What I see, at least from, from my side, is, is like, uh, like the differences between... Uh, the two continents of, of Europe and, and the U.S., um, like in, in like the whole approach to, to, to the gambling industry, how it's perceived, how it's being talked about by uh, like in, in the general public discussions. Right. It's I think there's like a big discrepancy. Uh, so one of the things to keep an eye out for is like how the conversation about iGaming will, will, will kind of like transcend uh uh, we see at least in, in some markets here in Europe, um, I wouldn't say a toxic, toxic atmosphere, but at least some resistance from like the political sphere, from the media side of things in terms of like the coverage uh, that the industry gets. Um, so how that will look for, for the US, it will, will it still be all of these uh, like sunshine stories of new partnerships or joint ventures or and, and new introductions of legislations or will there be like a backlash that we have seen at least in Europe in recent years uh, in terms of like a more negative uh, tone towards gambling and uh, like the industry as a whole. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that's a very good point in in the sense that if we compare Europe with uh, North America, and I I just came back from New York uh, the other week, there was a a major gambling conference and and, uh, really interesting because the culture is totally different from... Yeah. The North Americans to the Europeans and yeah. you know for, for example in, in Europe we um, we talk about iGaming mm-hmm. and online gambling as one product um, that yeah. encompasses all these uh, different verticals like sports betting yeah. and casino and so on the, the Americans are very careful dividing mm. the, the expressions sports. between yeah. Exactly, and they call it sports betting and iGaming yes. for example which yeah. is uh, exactly. a different term and you know they approach it in in the, the culture over there is like if you if you do some sports betting, that is not gambling to the Americans. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. They see that as part of their culture. Like you, put a, yeah. you, you, you place a bet in, in uh, on the NFL game, and it's very like mm-hmm. intertwined with their you know general culture in general. But the moment you yeah. mention online gambling, then mm-hmm. you know the alarm bells goes up uh, a bit. Uh, yeah. as well. and, <laughs> and it, it's yeah. quite interesting. And- yeah, and I mean, we I think we saw like the same patterns as well in in, in Europe. Let's say again, going back to to where we started uh, ten years ago, uh, uh, looking at a market like my home market, the the Danish market. When we went through this regulation phase, online gambling, or in 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 this case, like the online casino uh, product as a whole, was seen like very like non. It wasn't a product that was engageable for a whole like wide audience of players, right? It was something you didn't talk about. Whereas now, over time, uh, we've seen it like gain traction in terms of popularity with, with players. Um, so now it's become more, I would say, socially accepted uh, to 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 play play online casino. 
there are still some 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 stigmas associated with it but it's going to be interesting like you say like how will this like will this transition be the same in in the US as well will they again catch up a little bit to where we are in Europe um and how will they how will they handle it basically yeah exactly and you know i i moderated a panel i, I went i was at the wgs uh, the, the executive conference in in barcelona i moderated a panel that was really relevant to this what you talk about which is it was titled mm. what can the american operators learn from the european mm. counterparts and yeah. one of the discussions on that front is like the regulatory and cultural headwinds that we've faced in europe um, mm -hmm. What can the Americans learn from that? Because obviously, yes. right now the industry is somewhat flying under the radar. I would say. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. We, ha we haven't yeah. seen like the, the backlash from the um, from the general exactly. populace uh, the yes. same way as we saw in Sweden, for example, a, a, a couple of years ago, uh, yeah. due to the massive uh, uh, advertising advertisement, like the really aggressive ag advertisement exactly. campaigns that we we saw yeah. in Sweden. That really generated mm -hmm. like a massive backlash that then you know led to kind of political um, intervention and, and, and so on. Yeah. And um, you know the Americans are interesting in that regard because uh, they have been able so far, at least, to build some of the major brands. You know, like the DraftKings and the FanDuel's and so yeah. on. Yeah. They have been able to build their brands in a in a way where they are seen as quite cool rather than yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. nefarious. Yeah. And and like those guys obviously also had a different starting point than from actual sports betting, right? So they had uh, again, it was more like a pool betting um, uh, approach they had to it through through fantasy uh, like fantasy yeah. sports, uh, which is a, like product wise is a, is a slightly different uh, and has some some different things associated with it at least in in, in my view. Mm. Um, uh, so so they have also gone through this transition and. Those guys that you mentioned there, like uh, uh, FanDuel or, or DraftKings, like they have gone through, they have been able to maintain, as far as what, from what I can see here from across the pond, uh, like that cool image in in terms of like how they they communicate, how they engage with their audiences. Like they have huge, massive social followings on on their channels. They have, uh, from what I can see again, like high engagement uh, to their posts. Mm. So again, they've been able to maintain. Like the good, uh, the good positive vibe about the industry, even through this transition. Um, so, but like you say, like the differences again, and like what what can they learn? Uh, the U.S. Uh, operators from from Europe again. I would say having a more proactive approach in terms of player protection tools, uh, having a more proactive approach to, towards like the KYC processes, the AML stuff. Uh, so, so we avoid these again situations that we have seen, for instance, in the UK, with with uh, operators getting massive, massive fines for for either like failing on their 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 player protection duties or the AML stuff, uh, uh, which is again it's becoming a global trend. Like this increased focus uh, on on AML policies, how we like how which. How which funds do we accept? Uh, do we actually know where they're coming from? All these processes, uh, and again, it comes from a global trend. Uh, we again uh, going back to my home market, Denmark. We had had a lot of uh, negative press also worldwide for for AML breaches uh, from uh, from payment institutions from well-renowned uh, Danish, uh, one of the biggest banks uh, in in Denmark, uh, a few in the Nordics as well, right? So so all this stuff is coming like on the agenda. Uh, which then goes into the political agenda, which feeds into the media agenda. So it's like it can be. So if we, if the U.S. Uh, operators can kind of like tackle this head on, get the processes straight, avoid these like bad cases that we have seen here in in, in Europe. Uh, like uh, I would say that would be a, a major help to themselves in the long run. Even though yeah. like introducing these things would most likely have a negative impact, uh, at least initially, on, on, on their businesses. But uh, if you like keep, again, maybe 10 years headlight or five years or even three years, like how the, how the, the positioning and the market, if we don't have this in place, uh, is, is, is to be seen. It's, uh, yeah, exactly. That's where we can see, again, a negative backlash uh, of the sorts that we have seen here in Europe. 
Exactly, it's like uh, repeating the same pattern in a way that uh, we exactly. can already predict. We can already predict what's going to happen, and I think Paul Leyland talked about that as well, which is like, mm. as long as the industry flies under the radar, everything is okay, yeah. you know. But yeah. but the moment this uh, this um, this reach a political uh, level and and, yeah. and um, yeah. the the masses start setting uh, demands on the industry to to uh, to, to improve itself from a responsible gambling yeah. point of view is the damage has already been exactly. done right mm. exactly yeah, and then like we, we cannot avoid negative stories they, they will pop up right there will mm. be bad bad stories the thing is that we we need to show that it's not a systemic failure that it's not like the yeah. industry as a whole that needs mm. uh, new enforcements or measurements being introduced but that we can actually proactively handle yeah. this uh, so again like those would be my 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 best advice for for, for the yeah. us operators for sure so, 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 like, I guess another, uh, like, regulatory-wise, now looking at Europe, uh, a trend mm. that seems uh, evident to me right now is uh, that uh, there's a lot of headwind in Europe at the moment from regulatory yes. point of view. There, there isn't that many good stories, let's say, that are that are coming out at the moment. Um, no. What What do you think, like, going into 2022? Um, mm. Is 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 it all grim? Like, is there any kind of like positive uh, aspects to draw from from this? Like, is there anything that can be improved? Uh, I think again, like the 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 like the, the the level of engagement between the operators and and the regulators. Like I think that that's my hope at least that we will con yeah. like try to build and establish this relationship to be yeah. again part of the solution rather than being enforced with with uh, different restrictions uh, from a marketing perspective or from again a player player limit perspective or like player, player protection measures, right? Um, that would be my hope. It, like the outlook, to be honest, is, is, <laughs> is, is, is a little bit dark, uh, right? We, we, we don't see many, many positive stories emerging about uh, uh, the, the concepts of, of regulation and, 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 and gambling. Um, yeah. I think it was mentioned in, in many, many podcasts before that you have hosted as well, like the, the gambling industry has very, very few friends. Uh, right, <laughs> so so it's it's uh, it's an easy target. We are an easy target. We must accept that. Um, I was yeah. easily recently part of a like a, a roundtable discussion around this as well. Uh, and my point around this is that we we as an industry need to face to the fact that we need to wake up to the fact that we are an easy target for everyone. Yeah. It's so easy to build a negative story, either from or to score some cheap political points uh, yeah. by imposing new restrictions because in the in the eye of the receiver, it, it seems like, okay, um, you're actually, if you're a politician, for instance, and you impose new uh, limits uh, on whatever uh, gambling product, well, then you're seen as like an enforcer and like you're doing something uh, proactively. But what we have also seen in, in, in some other markets, uh, of course, like Sweden is the most predominant example, I would say, in terms of like the channelization rate that, that, that we see in the markets, like the negative effects the short-term political gains, uh, in my view, doesn't outweigh the the, the long-term negative effect uh, from these changes, right? So, mm. I often, uh, and I know, like for instance, again uh, going back to Denmark, uh, like there is a dialogue. Uh, there will be most likely some some uh, marketing introduction, uh, sorry, uh, marketing uh, restrictions will be introduced most likely during next year. Uh, it's being looked into by the Danish Ministry of Taxation. Um, but the kind of like the, the, the negative thing that it will do for the market uh, is, I think, again, they need to be, I hope they will be very, very careful. I hope they will, again, include the industry uh, in terms of like finding a good balance because of, we can also say again for Sweden, well, was the advertising balance correct? Probably not. But at the same time, Regulators must also face it. Like whenever a market gets regulated, like it's like everyone is fighting uh, to to gain those uh, initial market shares, right? So of course, the marketing spend will increase, and then hopefully it will find like a a good level uh, over time. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, let's see. It's it's definitely uh, definitely something to to to, to monitor. But like when again. When you see the, the 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 like the mentionings and the talk, what's being talked about, what's being mentioned, like what are we being compared to? We're being compared to alcohol, cigarettes, like these types of products, right? That's then they want to introduce the same restrictions um, on on gambling that we see on these products. 
Hmm. But the thing that people tend to forget is that we we are an online, it's an online commodity, right? So it's so easy to circumvent, uh, yeah. uh, like the the, the regulated uh, sites, right? Uh, whereas if you if there is an alcohol ban for 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 marketing, for instance, well, it's not easy to go out and finding like illegal uh, booze somewhere right you would need some connections right i'm not saying it's yeah. it's not possible but you would yeah. need to do a little bit more homework <laughs> compared yeah. to switching on a vpn going to uh to uh like a, uh, an unlicensed site on the internet and, and depositing and playing without any restrictions without any limitations mm. at all right um so going back from a, like a player perspective like all of these intro like introductions of like limitations tax raises in the end, uh, it's the player that gets a less attractive product to, to, to play on. Uh, exactly. And that's why we see like the, the, the players, they, they, they go elsewhere. They seek alternatives, right? Uh, yeah. Either in, within the industry, in, in our licensed sites, or they like, completely give up on it, right? Because it, it's simply not worth the hassle. Yeah, and and uh, like like this is also like comparing to our um, American neighbors, uh, the fact that uh, they've been very good at proactively working with the regulators, with the politicians, let's say to yes. Yes. to get the uh, to get the legislation uh, right in the various uh, states. And okay, the, maybe there are exceptions to that. You know, mm -hmm. New York obviously with really high taxation rates, and uh, mm -hmm. Florida that kind of introduced mm -hmm. a monopoly to start with. But but take Florida as an ex as a good example of of um, the power of a consortium of uh, operators when they come together, mm -hmm. they can actually make change. Because what happened in yeah. Florida essentially is that um, a consortium of uh, operators they uh, they 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 went together and they used twenty million dollars in a um, in in a lobbyist uh, efforts basically mm -hmm. to change yeah. uh, the legislation and and to mm -hmm. to withdraw that monopoly that uh, was uh, awarded to the to the Seminole tribe essentially that was operated by Hard Rock um, mm -hmm. essentially to open up that market and you know yeah. twenty million dollars is is a lot of money I mean. Yes. And, and they and they can and they can make things happen with with that money over over in the US. Um, looking yep. at Europe, and it's something that interests me, and in general is that mm -hmm. um, we haven't seen the same cooperation uh, between competitors in in various markets. Th there are industry organizations, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, Denmark. Obviously, uh, you have mm -hmm. yours, uh, Doga, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but they seem to me to be operating with a lot more limited uh, resources. Um, yes. Uh, is is that something that is holding the industry back in Europe? Do you think? Do you think that the industry needs to be better at cooperation? Or I yes. Again, again, going back to to like like the common acceptance or acknowledgement of like uh, the role that we play as an industry, right? I think that would hopefully encourage uh, more cooperation ar around this. I would say I, I I don't fully agree that that uh, that that we don't see any cooperation. So I, I think again. Uh, in Sweden, Bose and Spare has been very, very vocal uh, in terms of like um, at least trying to 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 find a decent, good common ground uh, and try to reach an understanding as well with the political sphere. Um, in Denmark, we have seen examples of of operators going together, producing marketing campaigns, dedicating uh, uh, five, ten percent of their advertising budget to 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 launch a, a common joint. Uh, TV campaign, right? To to in, uh, inform inform players, politicians, uh, other media uh, that uh, like the system that we have there, the regulation that we have is actually working in in our favor, rather than yeah. we need to impose more restrictions and reduce like the attractiveness of the product compared to these offshore uh, sites, right? Mm -hmm. So so I think there are examples. The effect of them, no, uh, haven't been 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 seen. But then again, that goes into what we talked about earlier, like the, the, the political climate, uh, because at the end of the day, the regulators are bound by uh, the politic, uh, the politic uh, winds that are, that are happening. Right. So is, is there like a positive wind going on? Like what, what type of uh, approach does the government has the, the, the running government that is in place? Is it like pro uh, against, is it liberal? Is it the Democrat? What, what, what's, what's the approach? Right. Um, so, so I would say, Yes, we, we could work closer together. We could, like, as an industry, again, if we pool 
<laughs> like are the resources that we have in terms of like marketing right we we could uh, we could buy all the media and, and almost uh for a month or two uh, for, uh in the year and then like um and advertise this uh, and then and, and be proactive about it uh, and show also all the good things that we that we deliver to society in terms of like tax uh, revenue generated or uh, um, um, again, the amount of uh, media investments that are being made by our companies or sponsorships of leagues or players or clubs, like all that stuff uh, that, that tends to be forgotten, again, to score some cheap political points. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just, uh, a cultural thing in general with, with the US being much closer to the decision makers than what we can be here Maybe, in Europe. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's, yeah. as right. a pure like uh, capitalist uh, nation as, uh, as the US is, yeah. the kind of money talks in a, in a lot of ways. And yeah. it seems to me that uh, the European the European culture is much more like uh, towards the social socialistic uh, side where it's uh, it's um, it's much it's much more difficult to just use uh, X amount of money in order to change legislation. Uh, exactly. yeah, the po- po- politicians are much more uh, in tune with their voters uh, mm. rather than the corporations uh, who would donate to, to their political uh, funds, uh, so to say, you know, for better yeah, yeah. and for worse, perhaps. But Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, like, yeah, we... we, we... Like the outlook for the for the European markets again, we have the UK, like you mentioned in the beginning, right? Revisioning uh, their the 2005 Gambling Act to cover mm. a more modern take on like what what has happened since 2005. So I would say it's definitely uh, due time to 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 look at yeah. this uh, because uh, a lot of things have happened since since 2005, right? Uh, so so. Yeah. But again, we have seen. Again, introductions or proposals from from uh, members of parliament of of, of two pound bet limits, uh, stake limits, similar to what they have in the betting shops, um, one hundred pound spend limits. Uh, again, these things will look good and, like, from a logical point of view, make sense. Mm. But what will happen is that it will drive the players uh, to to offshore um, companies. Offshore sites, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. and 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 it's it's just a question if the regulators will ever understand that um, uh, you know the the or it, rather if the voters will understand the, this uh, mm. issue at the end of the day because uh, you know yeah, from a surface level thing. as you're saying mm. yeah uh, from a surface level as you say it's uh, it's very much of uh, how of the optics of the politicians they are they are trying to make a career you know and a name for themselves and the the industry yes. becomes an easy target and as long as yeah. the um, as long as the voters don't understand uh, the uh, the issues of channelization, then uh, exactly. I guess we won't see a reversal and of these uh, headwinds. Exactly, and, and and I think again, it's a it's a very very good point again about about the differences between like the US and and in Europe, right? Where where me we as an industry perhaps should focus maybe less on the politician side of things and focus more on the end users uh like convincing them that like the systems that we have in place are are good uh, and, and, and in yeah. their favor that we can offer an attractive product uh, they feel safe because we are monitored by the, the authorities um so so like that could maybe be the lesson for for the european yeah. side of the industry like is to, to focus a lot on this right we've seen some good examples as well recently Right. Um, so, so again, uh, my main media exposure is from the Danish market, um, yeah. and we have seen examples of of uh, operators there, like Mr. Green, who I think they were the first to introduce like a dedicated TV spot that only talks about uh, like the, the the player protection tools that they have available from from Green Gaming. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. We've seen uh, social media media presence like Bet Three Six Five that that do dedicated tweets that only contain information about what you should do if you think you have a problem uh, gambling do a self test uh, links to, to, to more more uh, advice and information and like stuff like this is is like again a trend that i think will will expand into other markets where we see similar issues uh, again sweden i know that i think also the mr green has expanded into other territories using the same approach and i think that's Again, that's where we as an industry become more balanced, that we, we, we become more less aggressive on the like sell, 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 bonus, bonus, bonus. Uh, we become more informative, right? So so we can never eradicate the the, the like the selling messages, but we should we should find a balance, a better balance. Uh, and I think yeah. these are good examples of of um, of like a, an, 
an interesting and healthier development, uh, at least from my point of view, uh, as to what we will see moving forward. Absolutely. So, so uh, Peter, if we look at some of the individual markets within Europe, uh, mm-hmm. the, the hottest uh, ones, like um, especially like in Netherlands and Germany, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. obviously close to each other. And um, yep. Netherlands in particular is interesting because obviously uh, many of the major operators have been forced to uh, withdraw from the market until they mm-hmm. have secured uh, their license. And uh, yep. I think something that is a bit underestimated from investment point of view as well, in, I think investors are underestimating the likes of Kindred and Betson being uh, moot in that market for the next, uh, mm-hmm. you know, nine months, uh, in, yep. in, more, more yeah, or less. Because they, they, yeah, because like that, that has been disappearing for uh, like for at least a couple of years, right? Uh, that kind of like revenue stream. Uh, so when they introduced this, there, I, I totally agree. Uh, of course, Netherlands is a is an attractive market. We know that like um, the players there, they enjoy both sports betting. There, it's a it's a rather mature market, I would say, also for for online casino, right? Um, so so yeah, I think you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right in terms of like what will happen. Uh, it, it's been a little bit of a a little bit of a clunky start, I would say, to to to, to the introduction <laughs> of the regulation. But it was the same That's case for, uh, in Sweden. It was the same case uh, in Denmark. It's it's like yeah. It needs to kind of like find its 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 two wig and then like um, all the different learning by failures. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. The the crooks uh, system like not working on on the day of the launch. Uh, yeah. So so. But uh, yes, I would definitely say that's one of the markets to really really pay a close attention to. Uh, I think a lot more uh, operators will will uh, go into into that sphere. Uh, so I'm 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 expecting a lot more licenses uh, to be issued. Um, yeah. in the near future but one thing that uh, is again, important to yeah. yeah yeah one thing that is i think is important to remember as, especially if you are an investor in this uh, space mm-hmm. and the likes of uh, kindred and and, and bets on and so on is uh, when they go live again it's not like they will they will generate the same amount of revenue as they did pre Mm-hmm. Um, uh, pre-regulation from day one, and not ju- not no. just the fact that they are more restricted and they uh, they no. there is uh, taxation coming into force, but it's also mm-hmm. the fact that mm-hmm. they are not allowed to use their previous database, right? And I think mm, uh, if you, for for example, uh, Kinder and Betson, it's going to take mm-hmm. a long time for them to build up liquidity in that market again. Yes, uh, and and again, it's it's the same pattern that we have seen in in. in Again, in Denmark, going back to 2012, when that was introduced, uh, like there's like these kind of like gold rushes to to get there, to get there first, to try to secure a, a large piece of the pie. So, like early on, the investments uh, won't pay dividends, but again, the long run, it's a much more stable uh, market, of course, uh, with no payment blocks in in the horizon. There are no um uh, ip blocks or whatever uh, like things that, that yeah. can pop up in, in in unregulated markets right so like from an investment point of view yes it, it will be an immediate hit to the bottom line but uh, like again long term uh, it's going to be term. for mm. the benefit of of of, of all uh, that's my yeah, for sure. prediction yeah yeah <laughs> good, good. Uh, and what about uh, germany i mean the, uh, the mm. dust has settled uh, since the yeah. re-regulation came into force mm. uh, here in the summer uh, somewhat at least uh, what, what's um what would you say is the current status of germany and what are your expectations for 2022 from an op- operator yeah. point of view yeah um uh... Again, Germany is, is is a very like interesting case, right? Uh, of a very very messy um, process leading up to the actual introduction of, of the legislation. The the interim regime has been uh, also a bit messy. A lot of uh, bigger operators have withdrawn. Uh, like uh, they have closed down parts of their product. Uh, so like. The, the the market maturity is is I would say is is quite low still right so so there is definite potential there but um, again with the restrictions that have been imposed from the get go uh, in the market and I'm talking now especially about the the casino restrictions that have uh, been put in place for for the t- transitional measures it it makes it a very 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 tough uh, business case for <laughs> for operators to kind of like buy into and and see the see the see the real value in it and again. 
what we talked about now many times again what will this actually happen for the player is it interesting for uh, a player that likes uh, to 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 play live casino that you cannot play live casino in a licensed market it it makes in my view very very little sense and again it drives players to to other uh destinations rather than staying within an uh, 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 a checked regulated uh, and healthy hopefully environment um and the same about again the, the 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 product features that they they introduced the limits they have imposed as well on on the on the product side right so i would say we will see like what what the impact will be of uh, if it will be like a more sports driven market uh, or we will see again a, a massive uh like low channelization uh, into the regulated uh, side of things and in, in terms of online casino and maybe a, a much higher uh, rate uh, for for the sports side of the business uh, it, it remains to be seen uh, i think again yeah. the more restrictions you impose the the the, the real winners are the like uh, offshore uh, uh, companies yeah 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 absolutely and uh, you know flying across the pond again to the to the US mm. uh, here i mean um uh, we, we've seen do we get the frequent flyer miles on this like uh... <laughs> back, <laughs> in, back, back and forth, forth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah if we if we got if we got the frequent flyer miles yeah, for every exactly. time we uh, we mentioned yeah, exactly. across the pond will be will be yeah, will exactly. be set for life i think uh, Peter, <laughs> <but> <laughs> yeah exactly <Good. laughs> no yeah you're right uh, uh but uh, but yes by all means let's uh, let's add that to our account we can call lufthansa later and, and see if we can claim mm-hmm. that but uh, uh exactly. for now if we go over again then to the to the pond and uh, mm. into into the us uh you know uh tier two operators bets on you know have announced mm. that they they are not going into uh, hardcore on the b2c side they, they will enter one state mm. which is colorado mm-hmm. but they will mm-hmm. be focusing on b2b you know and i i met um uh, jesper svensson in in the US, and you know, he's selling mm-hmm. his B2B product with it for the first time in his career. You know, mm-hmm. and and um, Betson is kind of shape shifting in, in in that regard uh, over in that mm-hmm. over in that market. At the same time, you know, they have one of their biggest competitors, Kindred, who is going full force uh, B2C um, mm-hmm. with lackluster results. You could say so mm-hmm. far, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and at the same time, on the um, on the tier one uh, side, we have the likes of DraftKings, who are still mm-hmm. massively bleeding in in the u.s market and there's still a lot of uncertainty and ambiguity of how this is actually going to turn out in the u.s so i'm going to ask yeah. you a very humble question uh, here peter <laughs> what's your <laughs> what's your predictions for the u.s market and its operators and suppliers for 2021 please can you give us an answer Ooh, that's a big one if i if i uh, can i get like a consultancy fee for uh for yeah. that would be that would make me like a rich well, man i think no um <laughs> You can do it retroactively, so in a year's time, you know, either <laughs> either it's... <laughs> yes, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Um, no, I would say uh, from from the operational side of things, um, we will see these changes again, like um, going into these markets again, there will be... Ma- it's, a, it's a different culture. Like we, we you, you mentioned this uh, yourself in the beginning as well, right? It's a very, very different culture. We cannot, as European operators, just go there with our brands and think like, oh, they will just adopt it. It's going to be fantastic. Everything is going to be working like it does in, in Europe. Like it, it is a completely different culture and, and, and pattern that, that these players have. Uh, it's a different preference that they have. So, right. So, so the localization of the products, adapting them to, to, to the local um, uh, routines and, and like, again, skill levels uh, that like the maturity of, of the product uh, do we need 5000 lines of betting on 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 each game or do we like need to focus on okay maybe maybe it's more the odd side we need to adjust like it's it's like these subtle subtle things i think um, uh, will will be a massive massive difference and i think again what we've seen in in europe again is is like the ux part like the player experience of like is it like is it going through the is it a tedious process to go in and place a bet like again if you have to scroll through uh five thousand lines of of, of of bet lines um is that really a, an encouraging uh, experience uh, on a mobile or should you just focus on uh, like a more simplified but uh, more attractive product again it's to be it's to be seen it's to be seen like yeah, the, exactly. the race that we've seen in europe is like okay we need as much 
betting lines out there, but like when we actually do analysis of uh, what's actually being bet on, right? It's it's like ninety uh, percent of it is like be- uh, distributed between ten different lines, right? So so maybe mm. we need to focus on that. Yeah, I, something I find interesting in the um, American market is uh, whenever whenever we talk to American operators or suppliers or experts in that uh, market, they 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 talk a lot more from like a really innovative uh, perspective mm-hmm. like they have a different mm-hmm. way to see the market because it's been moving so quickly for the americans yeah. uh, that they are asking like what's what's uh, behind the door like what's the next paradigm mm-hmm. shift for them and mm-hmm. whereas the european market the european operators tend to be more traditional and 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 um, slow moving yes. let's say and more iterative yes. Yes. Uh, so to yeah. say and, and you know I, I, and and one of these one of these kind of paradigm shifts that I think will be really interesting for uh, 2022 is um, we've talked about this many times now in the in the podcast, but I think mm. 2022 will be the coming out year for mm. streaming services uh, yes. who will be integrating sports betting into yeah. the product, yeah. uh, where yeah. the the viewer, the user, is not there uh, to mm-hmm. place a bet, but they will be presented with the option to to place a yeah. bet if they want to. Yeah. If they don't, that's exactly. okay as well. So exactly. for the likes of uh, Dazon, for example, Dazon or mm-hmm. wherever you pronounce them, mm-hmm. uh, they <laughs> hired Shay Segev uh, a year ago, yep. and yep. Uh, and 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 now they are announcing their plans that they are now moving into um, the next phase of the uh, of, of the life of Dazon, which will be a mm. a community driven streaming platform where you can also place bets. Uh, so yep. it's like a paradigm shift uh, for that yep. streaming service that affects our industry. Uh, let's say, yeah. and then the question is, what happens to the traditional sports books, uh, mm-hmm. sport books like the best three six five, for example, when, exactly. when all of a sudden will... you you have these streaming services? Yeah, exactly. Like, will they completely skip this uh, again, the European <laughs> style of, of of gambling, and just move into this social social sphere sphere of 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 of, of betting? Um, that's definitely a very very interesting point uh, that you bring up. I think, uh, and it's definitely something that I think all operators are. Are monitoring very very closely what will happen we see also like transitions in, in like for instance the online casino products right where, where we again introduce streaming elements or like shared playing um uh, yep. so so like this convergence of like what we have seen 15 years ago in, in online poker and online bingo with chat rooms like that stuff like that is being introduced now in, in, into online casino right and now it's of course video driven but it's still like the same and what we've seen like with, with twitch um, uh, streamers and, and like the social experience of playing online casino is is a huge hugely interesting uh, trend uh, that we should obviously uh, pay, pay very very close attention to moving forward uh, and like you say yeah. in, in the us like it's actually funny because 10 years ago uh, in in Denmark, uh, when, when the market was regulating there, we saw a Danish uh, telco buying um, the majority share of, uh, of an online gambling uh, company, right? With the, and they were also uh, had a very big like TV cable uh, service as well. Uh, but they never managed to fully integrate it into the product, like in like into the let's say the TV set top boxes. That was like uh, what we were everyone was paying attention to at the time. Or would they introduce it? Uh, like so, you were just flipping around in your TV channels, and you would see a sports match, you would see a live watch, and you could just like from your remote place bets. Like uh, yes, no, uh, I will take uh, next to score. It will be uh, Bronby or whoever it were playing at the time. Um, Adding these elements, like if you can, if you can fully integrate it into other experiences to enrich the 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 the, the experience, those will be, I think, what you asked for before. Those will be the winners, uh, I think. Again, yeah. um, so again, the the whole uh, like perspective on on uh, the social side of things, again, driven by uh, DraftKings and and their predominantly very very social and engaging product if they can merge this into like let's say live broadcasts well let's that's that's where it becomes really really interesting right 
Yeah, and even um, the likes of ESPN Plus, for example, which mm-hmm. is uh, yes. you know a, a massive streaming platform in the US owned yeah. by Disney, and you know going yeah, back exactly. to this again, Disney, Disney uh, have spoken mm-hmm. about this in the quarterly earnings calls that yes. that yeah. uh, sports betting uh, mm-hmm. is not something that is uh, stigmatized uh, anymore, and and uh, Disney yep. is open now to uh, to launch their. Uh, they're yeah, to launch themselves into the sports betting mm-hmm. side of things, and and you know, yeah, I, I think like when these massive uh, conglomerates start entering the the market, it's like mm-hmm. it's gonna be difficult for a traditional sports book in the US to compete uh, with that yeah. because uh, ESPN obviously uh, have um, massive amounts of um, uh, of uh, Sub- streamer subscriber rights, rights right? in, the, in the, yeah, exactly. yeah, subscriber base and streamer rights in the US, mm-hmm. and uh, you know the likes yeah. of uh, Kinder and others are not going to uh, be able to uh, to stream the 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 games the way that ESPN uh, Plus c- yeah. can, for example. And and like, how do you compete against that uh, when ESPN Plus will be able to um, attract a demographic that would never yeah. sign up to an online sports yeah. book with with you know its complexity and and, and so on. <clears throat> Um, but again, so, they're, they're, uh, they're like, it, it, I think you're absolutely right. And, and like, like, again, going back to, to, to what happened in, in, in the Danish market, like what we saw, again, like what we've seen now in the US with, with the NFL and the NHL, the NBA, like doing partnership deals with, with uh, sportsbook operators, like official sportsbook partners. Uh, I think it's DraftKings for, uh, for the NFL, for instance. Massive, yeah. massive deal, right? What is going to happen between again if you have uh, uh, like um, image rights and video rights for production that espn has for, for broadcasting uh, uh, nfl and then you have a, a betting partnership uh, with DraftKings, which is like a conflict of interest right how will the <laughs> how will the legal <laughs> side of things will will espn yeah. actually be allowed to offer this uh, service on top of their product <laughs> If uh, again, DraftKings goes to the NFL and say we have an exclusive agreement, right? Uh, like, yeah. like we obviously don't know the the nitty gritties of the contractual no. details. But what we saw in, in again in, in in the Danish market and when when it regulated in in, in two thousand twelve was there were uh, like broadcasting uh, rights, and then there are the the actual rights to to like the, the league, the sport, the the player images, and stuff like that. And those are two different things. Um, yeah. So so if you can actually say like place or offer uh, a sports betting product uh, when you don't have the actual, right, you only have rights to to broadcasting. Can you actually do that? That's gonna, like at the end. I think. In, uh, like in all sorts of life, uh, the lawyers win because they will uh, get to kind of like iron out the, the contractual stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. And uh, I mean, uh, uh, on on that note, we, we mentioned here the zone before as well, and and, and not mm-hmm. only is the zone uh, implementing sports betting within their streaming service, but they're also going community based, right? They want to mm-hmm. they want to build a community within yes. their streaming service and. That yeah. leads into kind of my next question for you, Peter, which is uh, community building within the mm-hmm. uh, within the gaming industry. And you know, b- b- yeah. uh, my good friend um, Carolina Palk is starting uh, Beyond mm-hmm. Play, which is uh, mm-hmm. a B two B product on this space. And also, Robin yeah. Eric Reed is uh, has launched mm-hmm. Live Spins, which is mm-hmm. their take on the on the Twitch streaming community trend and so on. And yeah. uh, they are very purposefully saying that it's not about who builds the best product it's it's not about mm-hmm. who is the first but it's about mm-hmm. who can build the community we'll the com- that is yeah. going to be yeah. in this way so so I, w- I would love to go into this uh, topic as well on the on the mm-hmm. social aspect of social casino social gambling um you know there's also an argument to be made that uh, social that casino or gambling inherently is not social and i guess we mm-hmm. it remains to be seen if these uh, uh if yeah. these products are going to be successful but I would like mm-hmm. to to leave it over to you. Like, what, what's your expectation on the on this trend that is emerging on on social casino and how do you? Yeah, but it, it, again, I think it's a paradigm shift, right? It's a paradigm shift that we're witnessing, and, and I think again, that's going to be one of the key things to like. If you have like a a bullet list, uh, that's definitely one uh, to, to to keep an eye on, right? Um, mm. Because breaking down these lot when i mentioned in the beginning around uh, like the, the social stigmas that are associated with gambling if again you can build the community and we've seen it like we see this in in in, in basically all markets we see it on the affiliation side like whoever can build a community of 
of, of, of people who are interested in either online casino games or sports betting or both or poker, whatever, like if you have the community, then you have power, right? Um, so yes. if you can merge the two, so if you can kind of bridge the, like the product side of things with the community, if you can bridge that, that that's definitely strong. Now, what I would uh, like to object against is, is the notion that, mm. that the product uh, doesn't win ultimately that doesn't matter like the product is not the most important thing to me and based on on at least on my experience like we see that the product ultimately is the deciding factor right uh, what we see is that whenever we do uh, surveys of players like what is the most important thing to you it's the basic stuff ultimately right it's like the the the, the deposits uh, and withdrawals are fast uh, that the the UX uh, is good and smooth, that you can place your bet fast without any delays. That the like so, these are the basic things that you need to 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 cover, right? And then like if you manage to succeed in that, you're in a much much stronger position, I think, yeah. than having a big community with a subpar product. But I would like to challenge that argument a bit, Please. if I if Please. I may, because uh, I think we are saying that from um, from the perspective of 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 online casinos traditionally being a um, quite lonely product so mm -hmm. we haven't seen exactly the uh, the uh, social product being rolled out nope. successfully yet so so you know right now sure. it's it's basically you interacting with with the with the ux ui so yes you're right the the, pro mm -hmm. the product is everything but um mm -hmm. think about this um if 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 um if you are starting a competitor to tinder mm -hmm. as we all know uh and you build the best product in the world on, on uh, mm -hmm. an, an online dating. And mm -hmm. uh, then you ask a user to go into that product and there's no one there. Mm -hmm. uh, then mm -hmm. what, uh, what does it matter if it's the best product? Exactly. But, but you, like, in my view, in order to get the big community, you need the good product, right? So, so it's like a chicken and egg kind of thing. Like, what do you need first? I think it's very, very difficult to build a big community if you don't have a good product. That's kind of like my point. So yeah. Even though, so, let's so, say, let, okay, please. Yeah, yeah so, so I'll, I'll give you another analogy on, on this as well. Okay. So we, we, come from, we come from the nightclub world, uh, mm -hmm. right? And, and um, we, we, we organized, in, in our previous life, we organized a lot of mm -hmm. parties and events and so on and so, so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a principle in those events. Mm -hmm. And um, that principle was very simple because we asked ourselves a question, like, what makes a great party? Is mm -hmm. it the coolest light systems? Is it like... The coolest decor in the nightclub is it mm -hmm. the best location of the nightclub for example mm -hmm. and but uh, the principle was very simple people go where other people are mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so we had this principle where it doesn't matter if we have four blank white walls and, mm -hmm. a, and a shitty sound system if the right <laughs> people are there then mm -hmm. others will follow and, and yes, um, yes. Uh, but will and, they stay um, there that's the important thing will they stay there yeah and in and in and in the nightclub world, even if you if you build a following to the coolest newest nightclub, um, mm. it, it's a lifespan of of the, the crowd, the, like the hip crowd. They are there for a while, mm. like for one or two mm. years, and then they mm. move on to the to the next place and like the the, the next sort of yeah. place. But the, but the coolest promoters, the coolest places um, of the of the coolest promoters, it was almost like an anti culture where like the places mm. were were a bit like shitty let's say but they were yeah, it was yeah. just the cool people were there you know and the other cool people mm -hmm. wanted to be there as well so to, so, to yeah, say. Yeah, so, so i'm not sure to be honest to be honest with you in community building i would say that um it's more about like how can you ensure that you get the right people to your mm -hmm. uh to, to to be to be at the right place at the right uh, mm -hmm. time in order to build yep. a successful uh, group of people that interact with each other exactly so, but, I, but not, again yeah. yeah but like going back to your example with tinder right like it was inherently a, a good product experience from the get-go right uh, so yeah. how did revolut grow uh, like they grew through a fantastic like personally the best onboarding experience i've ever seen uh, like if i could replicate mm -hmm. that uh, to 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 yeah. the online industry that would be fantastic like you would be miles ahead of of, of a lot of the industry right so mm -hmm. as i see it if you if you don't have like, like the basic stuff in order if you don't serve uh, you could have again the coolest people uh, promoting your product, but it will be like putting lipstick on a pig, right? So ultimately, <laughs> it will wear off. Uh, 
right so so yeah. so that's that's but it's gonna be like, we can almost like uh again we should uh, like put a date in the book and then go back and then revisit this in, in a year's time from now to see to see uh, how the developments have, have progressed it's gonna be definitely yeah exactly it's a it's it's just it's just a very interesting uh topic to talk about like how do you build mm. a community and, and there's yes. um there's a marketing growth term that is called the mm. um the 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 cold star problem uh, which basically mm -hmm. says that uh, you know if you if you build a really really great product often time yeah. it becomes a, a a lone star like a, a long yeah. very bright star it's, it looks amazing yeah. but it's it's by itself mm -hmm. right because you need mm -hmm. that um you, you you need to you need to cross that threshold of of a number of people uh, if it's critical community mass. based exactly like critical, critical mass, mass right yeah where where the community takes care of itself where it grows yes. by itself right and yes. and um so there was there was discussions around this in silicon valley in the 2000s like mm. uh, uh you know there were like the same small group of people in the 2000s that were able to create these incredible products and people asked yeah. themselves like wh what secret what was the secret behind it like mm. like is it is it on the us front of the ui and and what they what they realized is like no it's not like they are incredible developers it's just that mm -hmm. many of these products were spawned out of uh, the universities so exactly. facebook yeah and again the, the social experience right yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and so they, they exactly. created this like atomic uh, community from one uh, from from one university that spread to two that spread to four eight and uh, and they reached a critical match in a in a in 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 um in a small demographic that then yeah. spread into and Tinder was the same then so Tinder started in a yeah. university right and like and, and like the... you don't have to spend like millions and millions of dollars to nope. target the entire nation and then kind of you build from there yeah. Exactly, the product speaks for itself, <laughs> right? It, it, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's like a, it's like a viral effect almost. Like, uh, yeah. uh, let's not go into the whole COVID discussion now, but uh, yes, it's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, but you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And uh, how, how to actually like hit on this, right? Again, I would still mm. argue again that, that the foundation needs to be the product, yes. right? You need to do your homework. You need to do like have a, a product that is uh, localized that's what we're working on here at software is is like going into these when we go into a market like we we, we want to go hyper local right we want to make sure that we have people on board that are uh, have a cultural understanding of what's like the unique traits of this market right so uh, yeah. uh, that we know for instance in in in, uh, in in under the swedish license where we know what actually like, we we have swedish people on board who understands what Swedish people talk about, what they respond to, what's being talked about in the media, what, like, again, for the community building side of things, you need this, you need to, like, ears and eyes on the ground, right? Um, so so that's yeah. definitely, like, again, one of the good things about, like, next year to, to keep an eye out is, again, how does yeah. operators adapt when you asked about Kindred? How do they adapt to the U.S. market, like the like the media channels that are available? What are people? Where are people talking? Is it TikTok? Like, has the conversation moved over there now? Is it, do what do we need to do to to like accommodate this? Uh, so so mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of a lot of open questions and, and very few answers. I'm yeah. afraid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but that's what's interesting, I think, because yeah, uh, on the uh, on this social casino trend, it's um, mm -hmm. it's it 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 forces the industry to. Uh, to view um, the marketing efforts and growth efforts from a different uh, perspective, because uh, again, it is it is about that critical mass, and uh, and as you're yeah. saying, the product is really important to to get right, and uh, mm -hmm. also the community building aspect is something that the industry um, has never done before, right? It's been an inherently <laughs> private. Or yeah, but yeah, I think so. Like, uh, like again, if you look at uh, a product like the poker, the poker community, right? So I think yeah, like, there are examples in, in, in the industry, right? That's a good point. Uh, mm. Where you can you can build a, a product around, and again, who 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 um, who ended up there? Like uh, being the like again, when you get the critical mass and you get more people to follow, well, it, it followed the strongest product uh, in the end, yeah. right? So so. True. I think, yeah. So, so let's see. But uh, yeah, there are examples, and we see again 
uh, huge Facebook groups or like other social media groups of, of players that are interested in, in the products that we offer. Uh, and if you can, again, build a bridge uh, like they're working on with, with Beyond Play and uh, what we're working on with, with the, the live spins, like, again, if you can transfer that community into, <laughs> into our sphere, then that's a very, very strong formula for success, I think. Um, so if, if Facebook decides to go into gambling at some point, then we need to pay attention. <laughs> True. Let's speak about uh, RG, responsible gambling. Um, you know, we've been in the industry, both of us, for a long time, Peter, and, you know, we've seen a, a shift uh, from RG being kind of uh, in the in the corner and like a necessary evil in, in, in many ways to being yeah. front and center in uh, yes. within the organizations uh, that we see. Uh, and, and so... Um, you know, we made we made great strides as an industry, especially on the European side. Um, you mentioned yeah. here before that uh, the Americans still uh, have some ways to go. But what do you what do you see as some of the um, uh, trends within RG uh, for 2022? Uh, I think what has been worked on and by many many operators in, in the past as well is is like having better tools available to to actually be able to monitor in real time uh, what players uh, how they behave how they they act interact with the products uh, so like all this uh, like artificial intelligence like how you can train through algorithms and, and to like flag these players early on to put in the effort needed uh, and again a more proactive and personalized approach to, to this, I think it's going to be one of the things, uh, again, that we will continue to work on as an industry, uh, right? So we've seen um, many, many operators introducing uh, measures such as this, um, and it's going to be, like, it's going to continue. It's going to continue, I think, uh, and for the good of, uh, ultimately, like, for the benefit of the player, um, which is ultimately what we want. Yeah, and and so the likes of Kinder, for example, have uh, set out this very ambitious goal that they want mm -hmm. to eliminate harmful gambling by 2023, yeah. Uh, yeah. using basically AI and machine learning uh, systems in order to detect and prevent. Uh, or, I or think G that's uh, sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah, do do you think yeah. do you think yeah. that is ever going to happen, or are they are they basically uh, wishing for something that is not going to come true? Um, I mean, if you set the goal of that, then definitely it's achievable, right? It, it's what you put behind it, right? So if you put the right tools and the right people uh, in place, then it's definitely achievable. It's definitely achievable. Uh, how it will impact, again, the businesses and, and like the bottom line and all that stuff, it, it needs to be like a business decision, a conscious decision made by the business saying, this is what we we, we believe as a company that that betting on this in the long term will will benefit us right and this gives us a competitive edge because then we are perceived as the operator that uh, takes the most care of our players and has the most player interest at heart right um so i think it's a conscious decision it's a business decision like uh, any other uh, usp uh, that you want to put out there uh, in, in order to promote your product like Again, Mr. Green uh, has done here in Denmark with dedicated TV spots uh, or uh, out-of-home campaigns uh, highlighting uh, green gaming. It's like these things are, are becoming front and center because these are also the things that we get uh, when we see these bad stories, right? Um, we want to make, we want to highlight all the tools that are available, either both from on, on our side, but also available to the player that they can just pick and choose like what they want, set responsible limits, only bet, bet with what you can, uh, and, and uh, ultimately you'll be like taken care of, right? Um, so I think yeah. RG, yes, will become an increasingly important uh, uh, USP for, for many, many operators. How we do it, uh, operator to operator, will be different. There will also be, again, regulatory measures coming in, most likely, um, but it's definitely one of the most important things to 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 to, to pay attention to uh, in, in the next year we've we've mentioned quite a few important things now i haven't <laughs> Just yes, like, exactly. Uh, if I remember back to the list, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we have. And and uh, we we're gonna start rounding off uh, here in a little mm. bit, uh, Peter. But. Uh, sure. uh, we cannot uh, go through a prediction uh, podcast uh, without uh, mm -hmm. at least mentioning uh, a little bit on the crypto uh, side mm -hmm. as well. It's, it's, it's selfish of me, of course, because I it's, it's something that I've uh, that I'm quite exactly. interested in. You um, invested, maybe also. 
Yes, yes, I am. Like in a, in a, right, in a okay. stupid, right. like yeah. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's, you know, it's it's one of those funny things. I tell you, funny funny story, Peter. Like I I yeah. bought this like ridiculous NFT um, mm-hmm. for like I mean, it's not like crazy amount of money, but but like stupid amount of money for what it mm-hmm. is. Let's say it's a, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's, a, it's a pixelated JPEG, and. Um, mm-hmm. And someone, you know, someone told me like, "What, what the hell did you do this for?" And and, mm-hmm. I, and I and I said, you know, for me, it's a win-win because mm-hmm. uh, you know either this uh, crazy NFT uh, hype continues and it uh, bust, increases yes. in value, uh, kind of thing, mm-hmm. and and you know everyone's happy and I look like a genius, mm-hmm. although you know it has nothing yeah. to do with with that. I I, I, do, I honestly don't know what's going to happen, uh, no, said, no. or it uh, it crashes down to uh, mm-hmm. you know zero more or less. Mm-hmm. And uh, and mm-hmm. I lose my money, but I said, you know, if that happens, then whenever I meet a friend in the future, and my friend has a bad day, he's sad, yeah. you know, and and uh, you know something shitty happened, you know, they mm-hmm. broke up with a girlfriend, or you know, yeah. they lost uh, <laughs> they lost uh, money on a bet or something like that, mm-hmm. uh, then I can always say, well, you know, I feel really bad for you, but remember the time I bought a, J- yeah, exactly. a pixelated JPEG for way too mm-hmm. much money, and now it's mm-hmm. worth nothing, right? Your yeah, exactly. Could be worse, yeah. So it's a win-win. Exactly. I make my it, friend feel better. It's it's uh, again, it's like placing a bet. <laughs> it's it's like uh, it's very very close <laughs> exactly. to to the industry you're working, right? So so you're absolutely exactly. right. It's a gamble. It's a gamble like anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to get in at, at the ground floor and then hopefully uh, scrape yeah. out the big win in the end. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But like but that, like what will yeah. happen with like the whole crypto? Uh, the payment sphere, like uh, that's also like again very very close, uh, close close and hard to, to, to us. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's, it's 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 you you cannot separate the two, right? Without payments, you don't have True. any gambling, right? So so it's yeah. This is so closely like uh, tied in together. Uh, so yes, I mean what we have seen so far, at least uh, based on our experience here, is like there has been like it's just at the verge of like breaking through like uh, like the, yeah. the like the, the, the mainstream right like getting over that like a uh, so to speak hump of like uh, the, the reservations that people inherently have in the, in new payment methods that are not uh, tied to gold reserves <laughs> right yeah. so 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 exactly. uh, like but when we see like countries introducing uh, uh, cryptocurrency as official currencies of the of the of the land that's like that's when we begin to break down the barriers right and that's also where we can uh, tie the the two things closer together within our sphere, right? Uh, and even uh, like betting on uh, like crypto prices uh, could be a thing for the future as well. Like so, you can double double hedge your your bets exactly. or whatever you want to do, right? <laughs> it's it's it's, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. it's it's so so interesting. Yeah, yeah. But like from from your I'm perspective, like what are your predictions for for this whole sphere? Since you're like you have a personal interest uh, and a financial interest <laughs> in, in this as well. Yeah. I mean, I think um, the, it's a it's a um, it's a five hour conversation in its own mm. right in general. Mm. But le- but let me just say, I think that this can go many different directions uh, in mm. in general. This space and and what is interesting is uh, the expression NFT is uh, mm. the expression. I heard it the first time in February. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. that's like exactly. nine months yes. ago. I mean, it's, yes. and and since then. It, yeah. it has exploded like it massively yeah. exploded and yeah and um i think that the way we view nfts today as uh, mm-hmm. digital art more or less mm-hmm. um is uh, not what we will view it in 12 months time i think the uh, the use case for nfts are much deeper than just for mm-hmm. digital art uh it yeah. is essentially um, it is essentially uh, something you can uh, like verifying ownership in general on mm-hmm. the blockchain is something yep. quite powerful that I think uh, uh, there is so much experimentation happening right mm-hmm. now uh, yeah. on this. Uh, and on and this some front. will fail, like like in all of the like Many some will, will fail. fail. Yeah. Some will uh, crash, and like uh, we yeah. will see scandals. Like uh, again, when <laughs> where, where, like exactly. we saw in, in the in the spring of this year with football uh, football index in, in the UK, for instance, like a, 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 exactly. a, a completely different take on on an yep. existing concept of sports betting right which ultimately yep. failed and uh, of course it's it's a sad sad story for all the people that l- lost uh, yep. a lot of money right uh but like these things will happen and it will happen in the same space here like 
like you say, exactly. digital art, that's just, in my view, it's just a starting point. Like, so, so this is, yeah. again, the ground floor. It will expand, it will balloon, it will spill over into other effects, uh, into other yeah. uh, industries, into other, uh, like, interactions with, with, with us as a, as a human race. Wow, well, that's, uh, like, an exactly. alignment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that, that's it, you know, and... and um... Rewinding the tape back to 1999, and we saw mm-hmm. a similar craze uh, in mm-hmm. in the fact that uh, that uh, investors and the world realized that the uh, internet is going to be the future. Yes, and so uh, investment was flowing into the space. Money was mm-hmm. cheap. Whoever mm-hmm. had anything uh, mm-hmm. product to do with the internet immediately got funding, and that is what yes. is happening now in the yes. crypto space as well. Yeah. Whoever has an interesting idea will be funded right now and and yes. so clearly clearly it is it is uh it 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 is showcasing the same type of bubble uh, effects yeah. as uh, the uh, dot com bubble uh, eventually when it burst in the year 2000 and what's interesting yeah. to point out about uh, the dot com bubble in the um, 99 2000 is that just because the bubble burst didn't mean that the internet was not the future. It yeah, exactly. just meant that uh, investors were um, kind of overvaluating the value in that very point. So, for example, it wasn't ready. Uh, it wasn't Amazon. ready to, to that level. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It wasn't Amazon. ready to, to like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Amazon, it took Amazon 10 years to recover their mm. share price from the year mm. 1999 as they peaked. Mm. And, um, they didn't recover until like 2008, 2007, mm-hmm. 2008 before the, ne- the yeah. next bubble uh, burst, basically. So I think we'll see something similar in the crypto space as well, where you know these uh, insane prices, uh, price hikes on uh, on uh, mm-hmm. NFTs and, and general valuations of of, of crypto based organizations, many of them will fail, and eventually a bubble will will burst, and and we'll see a correction, mm-hmm. and it might take years mm-hmm. and years and years before these genuine products. Um, uh, reach uh, the, the the same valuations as they as they have today or tomorrow or next year because you, you know yeah. this this bubble might continue for another year or two years or three yeah. years or maybe the bubble will will never burst who who, who knows but but um it's such or maybe um, yeah, like you say maybe it will balance out like in mm-hmm. the end like yeah reality will yeah, catch correction. up to 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 the hype right yeah. um exactly. and we will avoid it but yeah yeah but the point is like there's so much experimentation uh, mm-hmm. happening that it's almost like a digital renaissance in a way and this is mm-hmm. uh, flowing over to the uh, i gaming industry as well where mm-hmm. you know many operators and suppliers are all asking themselves right now how mm-hmm. can we leverage this technology and yes. you know many they don't have exposure they don't have in-house expertise so they mm-hmm. are they are they are trying to desperately find um individuals or uh, consultants who can uh, help them to brainstorm and to uh, to go on this experimental journey that might not lead anywhere but it might yeah. also need to some really cool new products and i think in a year's time when we do a new uh, mm-hmm. the earlier review uh, here, Peter. Then yeah, I think the, we'll have the your review, yeah. much better answers. <laughs> yeah, yes, we'll have much better I answers agree. to where those yes. where, where that experimentation will yeah. will uh, lead. Because the, the long story short is like we just don't know where the technology will go uh, okay. so far. There are some really cool exactly. ideas. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, the centralized uh, sports betting platforms are being launched at the moment, and lots yeah. of these uh, cool yeah. things and, and nft drops within slot games and you know mm-hmm. um, evolution launching their nft mega way which is mm-hmm. not really an nft slot it's just kind of like they bought a couple of nfts and built a slot yeah, as yeah. well but uh, but you know it's it's like you know but leaving and trying to uh, uh, include mm-hmm. and, and emerge these like how can we again ab- as an industry absorb these yeah. trends right how can we enhance yeah. the product offering that we have our relevance because that's ultimately yeah. the like the end point we want to stay relevant we want to have a product offering that is relevant to to to, to the audience uh so yeah. so yes much more uh time uh, money and the effort will be invested in into like trying to find the golden formula to how to merge these things and in, into uh, into something that ultimately brings value to the players that's absolutely true, Peter. Mm. So uh, let's start running off uh, a, a little bit uh, here. I mean, uh, the, the 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 only thing I'm um I, I wanted to end the podcast today a little bit on on uh, softer bet. I mean, before mm-hmm. the podcast here, you mentioned that 
you, you know, a year ago, I, I had the pleasure mm. of doing uh, a mm. podcast with your CEO, uh, Boris. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and uh, at that point, um, you know, you were about like 400 uh, or so employees. And you mentioned it here mm. before the podcast that uh, like now you are like 900 people. And I mean, mm-hmm. it's often obviously exploding. I mean, it must be one of yeah. the fastest growing organizations in the entire industry, more or less. And, and so that begs the question, like, what, what's uh, next for Softbet now? Like, how do you see? What's your prediction for Softbet in uh, yeah. 2022? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't see, see us like really slowing down. To be honest, that's that's not really mm. been the the the, the mo uh, since I joined, right? Yeah. So so again, when I talked about license, we have currently two licenses um, that we that we operate with. We will. My prediction for, for, for 2022 will be that we will have many, many more. We will launch into many, many more markets, um, expand our product offerings, uh, and enhance the product offerings that we have. Um, so that's definitely what we want to focus on. Again, ultimately, we want to make sure that we are competitive in each market we go into with a localized uh, uh, adapted product that is um, competitive to to like the more established operators in in, in the markets because let's face it like uh, some of the markets we are looking at has been relatively mature for a while it was the same case in in, in sweden when we launched there um, in in what was that in april 2020 uh, but we have like gradually taken market shares bit by bit uh, and that's what we want to do in, in, in these markets as well. So so from our end, uh, we want to, I would say, continue the growth, maybe um, maybe not a, an exponential rate that we have seen uh, so far in the past couple of years. But let's see, maybe we will be 2000 when we do our 2023 predictions next year. Um, so so let's see. It's going to be very, very interesting to follow us here. And I'm, I'm very, very happy to be part of it. It's uh, an exciting adventure we're on for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I had the pleasure to be invited to the, to the Softbet party uh, here a couple of uh, months ago. That was ago a five-year, uh, yeah, exactly. In, in Limassol. And uh, mm. my, my expectation and my prediction is that the 2022 party will be uh, even uh, bigger and better. So I'm, 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 you know, the invitation, I'm, I'm waiting for it and hopefully I can yeah. do that next year again. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I look forward to that as well myself. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Peter. It's been great to reconnect uh, here after uh, all these uh, years yes. and um, uh, looking forward to follow up on this conversation again. Fantastic. Thank you so much for, for having me. It's been an honor to, to be here uh, with uh, like a living iGaming legend. So uh, yes, yeah, thank you so much for having me and I hope to see you again. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Peter. Take care.